that was going to be harder than it was. What a mess. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. Now I know some of you watch that opening clip and are wondering why is that guy smashing up a watermelon with a flashlight? And the purpose was twofold. One is to show just how durable the solid acrylic lenses and Alzettas are because it's taking quite a hit busting through the shell of that watermelon. Whereas some lesser flashlights with just a thin plastic lens over a reflector would have seen significant damage the lens might have been pushed in. The other thing that I think it showed is just how effective the crenellation is on this LZ Alpha even though in my pocket I don't even know it's there. There's nothing poking into my skin or ripping up my pants pocket. And I think it just demonstrates the attention to detail that LZ puts into every one of their flashlights which is why their alpha is what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Alpha is Alzetta's smallest and least expensive flashlight. However, it is built to the same standards of quality and durability that have made Alzetta flashlights legendary. The Alpha is 4.1 inches long and weighs a very beefy 3.6 ounces. It's machined from 6061 T6 aluminum and mil-spec type 3 hard anodized in a flat black finish. The Alzetta logo and other graphics are laser engraved for crisp and long-lasting detail. All LZs and their components are 100% made in America, including the supplied lithium 123A batteries. LZs are also modular, though this is where the design of the Alpha differs most from the Bravo and Charlie. While the Alpha uses the same interchangeable switches as the Bravo and Charlie, its light head is integral to the light body. This means that the AVS and M60 light heads aren't compatible with the Alpha. However, LZ still gives you the option of a standard or flood solid acrylic lens, as well as a crenellated or non-crenellated bezel. The Alpha also keeps the same grip pattern familiar to LZ's 2 and 3 cell lights, which provides plenty of grip even in wet conditions without being rough on your hand or your pants pocket. The Alpha also has the same potted electronics as the others, which is why LZ warrants the Alpha to an unlimited depth underwater. Even if the light body floods, the Alpha will continue to work for the duration of its burn time. Note that you should always dry any electronics inside and out after submersion to prevent corrosion. Though the Alpha is obviously handy as a standalone light, it also makes a very compact weapon light. There isn't a tougher light that you can mount to a firearm, and even though the Alpha lacks an integral mount, most high-end light mounts can accommodate LZ light bodies. LZ even makes a few mounts of their own, like this lightweight ZRX I'm mounting on my Midwest Industries Picatinny handguard. The Alpha's peak output is 315 lumens through a relatively diffuse pattern. Though this is a standard lens, it does have more of a flood effect than many lights, including the other LZs. Here is the Bravo with the 235 lumen M60 head in comparison. Even though the output isn't as high, the M60 has a prominent hotspot that provides much more throw than the Alpha. Just for kicks, I also want to show you why I keep my Charlie with the 900 lumen AVS head handy. It easily illuminates that statue about 40 yards away and nearly my entire backyard in the process. This goes to show that lights are a lot more than just lumens, and the Alpha is another great option in Alzetta's lineup to meet your specific needs. The runtime on the Alpha is about 51 minutes, and that sounds like a lot of time until you end up in a situation like I did where I was pocket carrying this flashlight using it on a daily basis for a couple weeks and then I ended up at an overnight field trip with my daughter's class at a YMCA camp. We had a walk in the dark from the dining hall to a fire pit that was 20 minutes each way and halfway on the return trip <laughs> I had pretty much run the battery all the way down and that's why I recommend whatever LZ you get but especially for the Alpha pony up and get the high low clicky end cap because that way you can conserve the battery power when you don't need the full output of the LED. Unless, of course, you plan to mount a flashlight permanently to a firearm, at which point I recommend the twist end cap because that way you can't accidentally lock the light in the on position. But the Alpha is a perfect example of what people make, uh, uh, why people make a big fuss out of LZ flashlights overall. And uh, honestly, the first time you pick up an LZ, there's this face that people make. I know I talked to other reviewers about it. I think LZ owners know what I mean. When you pick up an LZ, you make this face like, 
you realize that Alzetta flashlights, the Alpha included, are a lot more than what you might have experienced ever before in a flashlight. At $130 for the base model Alpha, they run about $60 to $70 less than the equivalently equipped Bravo or Charlie models. So I think it's a great way to see what the fuss of an Alzetta is. And I think it's also a very good single cell flashlight if your budget can, can afford it. If you want to learn more about the Alzetta Alpha, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. It'll really help me out. If you want to help the channel even more, be sure to click right here to see how you can contribute to my Patreon campaign. And be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like these Elzetta flashlights. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.